In this video, we'll talk about autonomous specification. Autonomous self at specification is a process where a developing cell is able to differentiate without any external signal, as if the cell knows what it has to become in future. So it's kind of like a self drive. It doesn't need any external influence. It's an inbuilt molecular program that is driving the cell's fate into its terminally differentiated stage. So let us talk about cell differentiation in a bit more details and try to understand the nuts and bolts. So cell differentiation is a stepwise long process. Let us look at this journey. So imagine this is a stem cell and it's the starting point of the journey. And let's look at the whole journey towards a differentiated cell. So there could be transient cell states where the cell's fate is specified. So specification is kind of like a commitment step, which is uh, still liable. I mean, there could be alterations at this stage as well. And there is another stage of this commitment process, which is irreversible commitment. And this is known as determination, where the cell has to become what it should become. And there is no reversal at this point. And there is terminally differentiated state. In this case, the terminally differentiated state is the neuron. Now, in these days, we know all these kind of features and stages that occurs during the process of differentiation. Back in 1950s or 1970s, when these phenomena were discovered, very little was known about it. And autonomous specification was discovered in that point of time. And the groundbreaking work was done on very simple organism, which is snail. So in snail patella, there is specific cells which are ciliated. And these cells are specified by a specific blastomere. At 16 cell stage, you can see the trochoblasts are in red in color. So these cells would eventually give rise to ciliated cells during the larval stage. Scientists have shown that, yes, in the intact embryo, these cells are destined to become ciliated cells. But if these cells are removed, these trochoblast cells are removed and left alone in a dish, still they have the capability to become that ciliated cell, a ciliated cell as if similar uh, things are happening in vitro as well. This kind of experiments, though simple, it tells us that, okay, there are intrinsic drive coming in from the cell that is driving the differentiation. But the question is, how is this possible? What is this intrinsic drive? As if the cell knows what it wants to become in life. So it has to take this kind of fate and it would prevent other alternative fates. So scientists thought, what are the nature of molecular program? What are these in intrinsic signal? What are the chemical nature of these signals and how these messages are interpreted by the cell? These questions were key to understand the autonomous specification process. So, and the idea comes from uh, several research work and people thought that, okay, the idea might be hidden in the oocyte. So the egg cytoplasm might not be a homogeneous region. It might be highly heterogeneous. There could be compartments of different molecules and each different compartments are selectively segregated during blastomere formation such that one blastomere gets one particular kind of signal, other blastomere gets completely different kind of signal. And these intrinsic messages determine what that particular blastomere would eventually become in an adult, uh, in an adult or an, in an embryonic, later embryonic stage. So the whole idea about autonomous specification is the cell knows at the very early stage what it's going to become later on. But the scientists were still understanding or trying to understand what was the cytoplasmic determinant. Is it a protein? Is it a transcription factor? It's a microRNA, long non-coding RNA. It could be anything, right? So this idea came from tunicates, which are lower organism. They are C squirts. So the, this experiment was actually, this observation was actually made by Edwin Grant Conklin. So he found and he, uh, observed that there is kind of like a yellow coloration in the 
egg cytoplasm. Ultimately, this yellow coloration was observed in the tail muscles. So the muscle lineage has this kind of like yellow coloration. So this kind of fate map was uh, proposed by Edwin Grant Conklin. So eventually, when the blastomeres segregate, they, fo they found that, okay, the B4.1 blastomere is associated with muscle lineages. Now, elegant experiments, very simple but elegant, they dissociated these blastomeres. They dissociated them into individual cells and grow them separately in petri dish under some media. And they found out that each of these cells eventually becomes the cell that they are about to make in the intact embryo. That means the B4.2 blastomeres and A4.2 blastomeres are destined to become ectoderm in the embryo and they are also making ectoderm in the dish. Whereas B4.1 is making muscles, A4.1 is making notochord and portion of the uh, endoderm. So this kind of uh, fate is kind of like preserved even if it is done outside the body in the in vitro situation. And this can be only possible if there is an internal drive or internal cue which is telling the cell what to become eventually. Still they have no clue about the nature of uh, the signal. Several years down the line around 1970s it was discovered that this particular yellow coloration or this kind of pigmentation that occurs that might have specific mRNA known as macho. This macho would eventually be really useful for muscle differentiation. This is a transcription factor that triggers muscle differentiation. So how did people know about it? So scientists did elegant experiment. So this is how the macho expression look like in the control. So this is in situ hybridization where in the purple images shows muscle marker actin. So when, whenever you see this purple coloration, that means, okay, in that particular portion, muscle would be developed. So they actually eliminated macho with antisense probes, and they found out that when macho is depleted, muscle marker actin also goes down, as if the muscle is not formed. And when they put macho in a different blastomere, instead of B4.1, they put macho in different other blastomeres, there is ectopic development of muscles. That means macho was the key determinant of this autonomous specification. And this was one of the breakthrough in uh, the developmental biology field. People understood that how intrinsic signal can guide cellular fate, and that was the basis of understanding autonomous specification. Now, let me tell you that autonomous specification is not the only way of cell fate specification. After looking at autonomous specification, don't think that there is no external influence required for a, a, a fate specification of cells. This is only one of the way by which cell fate specification can be achieved. So let me tell you a little bit more idea about other kind of uh, specification which happens in higher eukaryotes. So, cell fate of a tissue is said to be specified when it is capable of differentiating autonomously in a neutral environment. So imagine this is a particular cell which is specified to become muscle and we put it in a petri dish. So eventually it would become muscle. Another cell which was specified to become neuron, we put it in a dish, it would eventually become a neuron. So the environment is neutral, no external signal, it would be able to become what it should become. But let's say there are environmental modifiers. Let's say we put the same muscle cells in vicinity of several neurons. So the environment is highly heterogeneous right now. In this case, it's also possible that the neurons would influence and give some kind of like external influence such that these muscle cells are supposed to become neurons. So moral of the story, the environment can modify cell fate. And cell commitment is still liable at specification stage. So during specification stage, external influences also matter. So this is another kind of specification that is happening in higher uh, eukaryotes like vertebrates. So about these kind of specification, we would be talking about later. 
But autonomous specification was first reported in lower organisms like snails, like sea squirts, and we also looked at the mechanism by which autonomous specification can occur. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to follow my Instagram or Facebook page for notes. Support our channel using super thanks. See you in next video.